Hello and welcome to the Department of Basic Education TV News on Open View Channel 122 and on YouTube. This is your weekly news roundup of what's been happening in the education sector. My name is Tseho Hajo Moachi. This show is aimed at giving you the latest on what has been taking place in the education space. This week, we focus on bringing new information on the department's progress regarding the coding and robotics program after the roadshows, the May-June exams or second chance initiative, and more information on SA SAMS, the South African School Administration Management System that emphasizes a more paperless way of doing school admin. And of course, we will be reminding you of the importance of making reading a habit, not forgetting the progress made by the sector regarding the management of COVID-19. Stay tuned, it is going to be a highly informative show. You get to have your say too during this show by sharing your thoughts with us on our Twitter page at DBE underscore SA, Facebook DBESA, Instagram DBESA, and you can use the hashtag DBE News. Let's take a look at our top stories. The May-June exams have commenced, but is the department ready? We find out what the South African School Administration Management System is and if it is working in schools. And progress on the coding and robotics roadshows and where to from here. And the department reiterates the importance of reading. We are almost at the end of May 2021 and that means it's that time of the year again. Yep, the May-June exams have commenced. This is the time for all those who were either unsuccessful in meeting the requirements of the National Senior Certificate or unsatisfied with their matric results or would like to obtain the matric certificate to get a second chance at rewriting their exams. The Department of Basic Education has created specific support programs to assist these candidates to achieve their desired results. We support learners uh, through the second chance through four platforms. Number one, we provide learners with the online uh, uh, support where they can access, download study guides, all question papers and memorandums, and other video and audio additional material of various subjects. All that information is available on our Second Chance Metric uh, 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 program website. The second way we the second way we should support uh, learners is through broadcasting. We are broadcasting on SABC One. Gilles Anati, we're broadcasting on Mindset 319, Channel 319, we're broadcasting on Open Channel on 201. Of course, we're broadcasting through radios, your regional and, and in some cases, uh, local radio station. Number three, we are supporting learners who are preparing to write through face-to-face -face, uh, uh, classes that are conducted in 113 centers throughout the country. So that information is available on our website. Uh, and then the last one, of course, we provide the hard copy material for, for this learner so that they have got enough material uh, that, that they will be able to prepare to, for this examination. The matric exams went by smoothly last year with minimal to no challenges. But the question is, can candidates that are writing expect the same during these May-June exams? Well, we have an advantage this time of uh, having run the, the, the massive examination that we've never run in 2020. So this is a smaller number. We, we ran last year more than 1.2 uh, uh, examination for 1.2 learners. So this is about 300,000. We are ready. The department is ready administering the full uh, COVID uh, uh, standard operating protocols. What message does the department have then for those who will be sitting for the May-June exams? Life is a journey. On the journey, there are potholes, you have a puncture, there are breakdowns, but you don't stop the journey. You wake up tomorrow, continue with the journey. You will achieve the metric qualification. Voila! When you achieve metric qualifications, opportunities open. You then apply the institution of higher learning. You qualify for NSFAS, qualify for Funza Lusaka. Your life is transformed and changed. So we want to take the opportunity to wish all our learners and of course our teachers a, 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 a best examination. From the DBE TV news team, we wish them all the very best in these exams. To this now, 
The South African Administration Management System, or SASAMS, an IT system created to provide schools with a cost-effective and easy-to-use computer solution that contains all aspects of school management requirements. SASAMS was designed to meet the management, governance and administrative needs of public schools in South Africa. Although the system has been largely successful, it has had its challenges, but its users always find a way to work around those. Uh, previously, the Department of Basic Education uh, used to administer surveys um, in schools. Uh, it was called this 10-day SNAP survey as well as the annual school survey. And these were completely separate and very manually done. Uh, however, now we've no longer been conducting the, the um, annual school survey or the SNAP survey. We're actually using now data captured on SASAMS, uh, which eradicates duplication for a school and therefore reducing the burden on schools to, to have you know, further functions and further capturing of information. So the school uh, basically uses SAMS for their own um, efficiency in conducting the admi administration, as well as providing data to the provincial offices, as well as to the National Department of Education. Katle Khonfolo has more on how the SASAMS works. That's just one of the great uses of the system. It has been designed to assist schools to capture information about learners in a more efficient and time-saving way. For example, I go here and I see that number four, Mabusela... With any new system or any change, challenges can be expected. Are some schools experiencing any issues? Uh, there's IT challenges. Remember, it is an IT system. It's an electronic system. So whatever functions the school actually implements manually has now been converted into an actual system. Um, so there are IT challenges. So schools sometimes do not have the correct um, uh, tools of trade. You know, the, the, the actual computers that they have in place might not be of the correct specifications to use SASAMS. The operating system might be very outdated. Um, so all of these need to be upgraded and on par on to, to be able to use the current versions of SASAMS. So that's more on an IT side. Um, I'd like to say that SASAMS is not an online system. So I know there is a, a, a biggest challenge for that. Uh, the fact that uh, the provincial education departments as well as the national department is not able to upload data as, as quickly as possible, as real time as we would like it to come. So that is a challenge, the fact that it's not an online system. Um, there are also various, I think a very key challenge is understanding the usage of SASAMS. And there's a misconception on the ground at school level that SASAMS is for the administrator of a school. Because there's a term of administration on the system, it means it's a function that assists the administrator, which is not the case. The department says everyone in the school should have access to the system. It should not be left to just one person to use. The school in particular has been using the system for a while now and the deputy principal says it has been very helpful. Okay, as a school, we use the system for capturing of absenteeism of teachers as well as learners, um, curriculum related uh, data, all the marks is captured on SSMs, also the printing of the report, the printing of the schedules that's going in there, as well as when we register learners, new learners, and the, all the learners as well, they're all um, captured on SSMs, all their details are on SSMs. That means the addresses, the telephone numbers of the parents, medical aid information, everything. So if we need to find a parent in case of emergency, everything is on the system. Um, we are also going to use it very soon for LTSM. We already attended, a, um, our LTSM coordinator attended a meeting where they said that all the LTSM, that's learner teacher support material, will be stored on SSMs. Okay. And from SSMs, we're going to say what books were handed to, to what learner and the book number and all of those things. So it's actually a very versatile system. It can be used for many things. Despite the challenges the school has faced, she says the department has always been helpful when the difficulties arise. Okay, there's a few challenges. The first one is that if there's a lot of people on the system, the system is very slow sometimes, and it sometimes kicks you off. Uh, only one person can work on a module at a specific time, especially with the curriculum side. Then another thing is uh, the patch. Unfortunately, sometimes it comes very late, and then um, we already had to upload marks, and uh, because of the weighing and things that wasn't correct, we had to upload the marks and the marks might not be correct. So that is the only problems that we have. Not only are the teachers and administrators satisfied with the system, but so is the South African Principals Association. 
They say the use of SA SANS shows that the department and the country is moving in the right direction. In the majority, they are very positive um, because, like I said earlier, they're saying before they used to use paperwork and their teachers will write reports by hands and schedules. Some countries in the SADC region still use the old way of capturing school information. They were very impressed when they visited South Africa and were shown how the system is transforming the collection of data. You know, specifically I think it was Zambia uh, that we've had special engagements with them. They've sent out a delegation a few years ago uh, whereby we've took them around to the country, uh, to the actual schools to show them how SSAMS is being used on the ground and the benefit of it. Uh, and they were very interested. So we've actually even made available our source codes to Zambia. Um, there's many other countries that are also very interested. Um, I've been to Seychelles a few years ago, um, whereby there were a number of other countries from the UNESCO region. Um, and they've also you know, voiced their, their interest. To those who still have their doubts about using the system, what is the word from the department? SA SAMS is, is, is a mechanism in which uh, the DBE has put into place to assist a school. It's not something that schools must be compliant of, it's something that they must embrace to ensure it helps them to do their everyday work. You know? So if a, a principal um, has a, a parent coming to visit them, for example, a disciplinary case in, the, in their school, if this information is captured correctly on SA SAMS, when the parent is sitting in front of them, of a school of 2,000 kids, you log onto the system, you get the information at the touch of a button. You print the information out, you know exactly who you're talking about, with the, with the parents sitting in front of them. And they, they know the details of, the, of that child. If that information is not captured, you're going to struggle to go through all that paper to understand which child are you actually talking about, you know, with the parents sitting in front of them. So I think change is inevitable. Um, data is a precious commodity in this era. So it needs to be embraced. There's going to be a number of challenges, but I think us working together, um, uh, you know, DBE, the provincial education departments, schools, and parents, you know, working together to make sure that we make it a success. Uh, and I see SASAMS eventually being very successful in the future. Katlehom Folo, Pretoria. Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you are watching the Department of Basic Education's weekly news roundup. The exciting nationwide coding and robotics roadshow to prepare schools for this new subject and curriculum has concluded. The department has been working hard on introducing the much anticipated coding and robotics program in schools for the past few years. Officials from the Basic Education Department visited all nine provinces where this subject will be piloted. The principals that we have met in the country are the principals that are going to be participating in the pilot schools. Uh, we, we have identified, the department have identified 1,000 pilot schools for grades 7 to 9 and 200 uh, pilot schools from grade R to 3. Therefore, the principals that we are meeting together with the officials are only those in the selected pilot schools in the selected district. But we have covered all the provinces, selected districts, and selected schools. The number that, that we have visited the number of uh, the, the, all the nine uh, provinces, the <coughs> advocacy and awareness campaign started on the 1st of March and it ended on the, on the 13th of May. This initiative is about more than going digital. It is also about upskilling teachers and learners with great technological tools that they can take with them anywhere they go. This is quite an exciting and interesting development for teachers and learners. The number of uh, uh, districts that we have covered, it's 60 districts that we have covered. The number of officials that we have met and uh, discussed and made presentations to them, it's 494. The number of principals that we have engaged and made presentation on, it's 885 across the country. Those are the number of principals that we have met. 
Your question is how we were received. The principals were quite excited, quite happy with the new baby that is coming on the block. They, they are ready to, 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 to support it. During the countrywide roadshows, the department was able to deal with various challenges and concerns. So we have encouraged provinces to establish steering committee. Those steering committees are interdirectorate. You, you, there, there's some kind of cohesion that we have brought and synergy in the district in, and also in provinces. We've got steering committee at the level of provinces, steering committee at the level of, of, of districts. And how those steering committees are constituted, you, you, you have your curriculum, you have your ICT, you've got your teacher development, you've got your infrastructure, you've got your multi-grade, you've got your, your ECD, all participating. Now the challenges that you are talking about that we might have, uh, they, they might have raised, the, the, the steering committees that have been established will be able to mediate some of those challenges. Some of those challenges are challenges that we've anticipated, like the issue of uh, uh, timetabling, the issue of teacher capacity, and uh, yeah, those are the, the two major things that came up. But we have a list of challenges that we've brought which are, are receiving attention. This subject is an important one, especially for learners who are the future of the country. Remember, our youth are no longer national assets, but they are international assets. Therefore, the curriculum that is being provided must be benchmarked in terms of international standard. And this is exactly what we have done. We have, me we have measured our curriculum against international standard, so that when our, 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 our youth engage internationally, they must also be uh, uh, competitive. We don't want the youth that are knowledge co consumers, but we want the youth that generates that knowledge so that we become a competitive country in terms of, of, of knowledge. To us as a country and, and, and education is, becomes very, very important. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more information about the importance of reading for learners. As you return to school in the COVID-19 environment, this is what you need to know. On your way to school, keep your mask on at all times. Avoid touching surfaces, but also try not to touch your face, nose and eyes. Remember to wash your hands with soap for at least 20 seconds regularly. It would be nice, but please don't hug your friends. Avoid sharing stationery and your books, but if you really have to, always talk to your teacher first about it. And, oh, don't ever share your mask. Your mask is your safety. Your mask is your health. When you get home, take off your mask and wash it with warm water and soap. Stay safe and remember to keep washing your hands. Play safe, work safe. Let's beat the coronavirus together. Welcome back. You are watching DBE TV News on Channel 122 on Open View or on YouTube. This is your weekly news roundup of what has been taking place in the education space. Well-known author and illustrator Dr. Seuss once said, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. This is very true and important, especially for children. By instilling a reading habit in them, teachers and parents are building strong and confident members of society that are bold enough to face anything. Since 2015, the Department of Basic Education has embarked on a Read to Lead campaign, an initiative aimed at ensuring that all learners can demonstrate age-appropriate levels of reading in order to enjoy the benefits of being able to read. One of the main objectives of this campaign for the department is to create a sustainable culture of reading that will be reflected in school activities, in what children do at home, in their communities and in businesses. Through this campaign, the departments want to ensure that children are reading or at least encouraged to read in everything they do and everywhere they go. Terence Kala filed this report. This is a demonstration of one of the benefits of creating a daily reading habit with children. The Read to Lead campaign focuses on ensuring that children read in everything they do and not just at school. And this 
must begin at a young age. The importance of reading for sounds at the beginning for teachers, especially in grade R, equips learners with the skills for image and reading, such as recognizing beginning sounds of their names, and also enables them to read environmental print. Then it also, also they also demonstrate alphabetical knowledge and increase in their curiosity to read by doing pretense reading, which also acts as a building blocks for future reading. There are many benefits associated with being able to read daily. Reading does not have to be boring for the teacher and the parent, and certainly not for the child either. There are a few things that schools can do to ensure that reading for learners is fun yet educational. I think the importance of a reading corner is that the children get a chance to read for fun and they get access to a variety of uh, books and they build their vocab and the phonics and all. Terence Kala, Johannesburg. That brings us to the end of this week's weekly news roundup on Channel 122 on Open View and on YouTube. Remember to get in touch with us via all our social media platforms using the hashtag DBE News. Until next time, it's goodbye from myself, Tsekho Moachi, and the DBE TV News team.